Previously on Sailing Adrift, we arrived in Astoria, Oregon and have been staging ourselves in preparation for our big passage down the west coast of the United States all the way down to Mexico. Our first leg is probably the most daunting, mostly because this will be our first time in the ocean. Yes, you heard me correctly, after we cross the Columbia River Bar, also known as the Graveyard of the Pacific, this excursion will be the first time either of us, including the new and improved Drifter, have ever been on the open ocean. Some other nerve-wracking factors we have going for us are not knowing what it's like to be passing the point of no return, 50 nautical miles offshore without a soul in sight, whether we'll get seasick or not, if we can each handle the boat solo in case some serious sh** goes down, staying awake for hours on end, and just being fully capable and prepared in general. At this point, we feel like we're ready. Scared, but ready. The best thing we can do now is be prepared and set ourselves up for success. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot of things. I got all the stuff and the things. Snacky cakes. Mm -hmm. Intamin's cupcakes are better than Hostess by a lot. Nice. Mmm, my reward. <laughs> I cannot believe you packed all this stuff. That's crazy. Or more of my backpack. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Let's put it away. Okay. Now that our very strategic provisioning is complete. All right, I'm off to do the laundry now. Okay, Kelly. What are you doing? I am transferring the fuel from our old crappy tank to a newer one. Sweet. Off to do laundry now. It's just about a quarter mile up the road. Oh, by the way, this bag is seriously awesome. You look like you're gonna ascend a mountain. It holds a ton, super well balanced, comfortable to carry, plus it's got pockets for your detergent. In addition to our chores, we also had some planning logistics to figure out. This is the watch schedule that Chris has created. M stands for midnight and N stands for noon. Hi, you ready? Nope. Okay, what's next? Next up, get the jack line set up. In case you're wondering what jack lines are, they're the lines that we'll tether ourselves to when on deck out in the ocean, so we can safely move about the boat without falling overboard. Jack lines installed. Moving on down the list. That smells like a fresh water tank. We emptied it, put bleach in it, and now we're gonna fill it back up. All right, dude, fill her up. Go right into this, baby. Our main source of water, pure, clean, common water. Just like when I was a kid. Oh boy, I found it. Guess where it was hiding? Silly little cock bot thing from yesterday. Yesterday's project? Sealing off the water tank from the engine room. This stuff is food safe, but it is thick as F. So it was really hard to squeeze out. That's my review. Woohoo! Found my cock. And we're back. We're gonna play take some drugs. We're leaving here this afternoon. We have elected out of the two options that we have, the patch and these little pills. On Dan Citron. Take by mouth every eight hours. It's not supposed to be super hairy out there. We didn't want to waste one of our four patches, so we decided that we'll try these pills out. No, so, here we go. Dink. I hope it doesn't mess me up. I'm not a big pill guy. I don't like to take aspirin when I have a headache and all that crap, so. I love pills, I'm sure I'll be fine. <sighs> You'll be good. Totally. Yeah. We're waiting for the bar, basically, because the boat's ready. We're ready, with the exception of setting us up for sailing. And uh, so we've got about ooh, two hours before we leave. All right, Kel? Roughly two of the longest hours of our lives later. Well, this is it. We are just minutes away from departure. Made our last trip to the dumpster and uh, everything is secured and locked down in the, in the boat. We are ready for takeoff. <sighs> I can't believe today is the day. Today is, it's finally happening. 
let's just take a quick walk down memory lane. This is our boat and our home. The one we bought a few years ago, totally ripped apart, gutted like a fish, spent countless hours sanding and teaching ourselves new tricks. We lost a fair amount of blood, some brains, and our patience from time to time. We've poured our hearts into this project. And now... Kelly. Yeah. It's time. It is time. We're about to leave the dock here in um, Warrington Marina. And we're gonna head out across the bar and go into the Pacific Ocean, the big blue. I personally am feeling eager, a little nervous. I feel very zen right now. Do you? I do, yeah. The conditions, uh, they couldn't be better other than the fact that we're not gonna have much wind, so we'll probably do a fair bit of motoring, but that's fine with us. We need to get out past the bar. The big things that I'm nervous about is not so much the weather, seasickness. I don't think that's going to be as big a problem as it normally would be because of the conditions, but I still am prone to that, so I'm not looking forward to that aspect. We also took some, some pills. Mm -hmm. I don't feel tired, so that's good. Maybe that's what it is. I don't feel tired, but I feel very cold. Oh, that could be. You might be like numb to the yeah, world. I'm just like, huh. Anyway, and then the other thing I'm worried about is crab pots at night. Yeah. Because we're going to come out at like a... But we'll be well out. Well, not by the time the sun goes down. Ultimately, we'll be about 60 miles offshore, which is supposed to be very comfortable, but it will take us a full day to get out that far. We're, it's, it's 2 o'clock p.m. now. Uh, we'll be crossing the bar about 3.30, 3, 3.45. And uh, then we have, you know, three, three and a half hours left of daylight. Maybe a little longer because of daylight savings time. Mm -hmm. And then it's black and we won't be able to see near as well. Exciting stuff. Yeah, here we go. Let's do it. Drifter's ready, but are we? Just neurotically checking the bar again for conditions one more time today. So, no right. restrictions on the channel. That's good. Uh, this is the National Weather Service, though, that you sent me. Is there, like, a Coast Guard version of this? That's so you... the one. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go through our final checklist. We've done most of this, so it'll just mostly be done. Walk deck, stow, secure all items. That is done. Done. Check and secure outboard. Done. Check and secure dinghy. Done. Ensure all gates not being used are closed. Done. Set up downwind sails with wet protection. I don't think we're gonna use that, so we're gonna call that done. Okay. Uh, check gunnels for security, that's already done. Aft cabin hatch, pilot house hatch. Uh, and then the fort, you do the forward hatches, I'll do the aft cabin hatch. Turn on and test VHF and AIS. Transmitting. And yep, we're on there. And we want to make sure that you can hear things. Yep, the volume is, is on. off. Okay. All right, that's all set. Let's make sure all this comes up and we've got everything connected. Okay, so we have the chart data. We just need to make sure that the autopilot attaches. Ah, oh, there we are. Connect. Chart plotter is on, all systems go. The route data is in the chart plotter. That is all of it. As far as I can tell, SV Drifter is ready to set sail. Okay. For waters farther south, California, here we come. Here is the game plan. Primary objective is to spend the next two plus days heading south to Crescent City, California. Should we get out and something is amiss, it's not ideal, and we need to come back in, we will hang out until we can come back across the bar uh, safely, and then we'll come back here. That's our backup plan. Okay. You know, assuming we make it over the bar in the first place. Okay, here we go. Day one, still in brackish water as we approach the mouth of the Columbia River. 
Yes. We've set a new land speed record for our SV Drifter. We are currently going about 11 knots. That's the best as I've seen so far. Wow. I would imagine that has something to do with the outgoing tide. Where is it? These, these conditions, it feels like a uh, much more comfortable version of what we felt coming into Astoria. Way more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Kelly's got her sunshades on because yeah. it's bright outside. It is bright AF. Plus we took a pill that makes your eyes dilate. Yeah, that makes you feel really calm and happy. It's called the noxious, the, the nocturnal pill. It helps yeah. us see at night. It has yeah. nothing to do with seasickness. Works. Awesome. I see some wave action. Me too. See the nasty stuff's over here. We're gonna bypass that by heading up to uh, Point Deception, right? Cape Disappointment. Cape Disappointment. <laughs> We're gonna head towards that and then hang a left and kind of hug the right side of the channel. That's where it's a lot more uh, calm. Yep. And right now there's no restrictions on the bar. They did recommend us wear these life jackets, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do that every time. Safety first. Oh no, we're gonna run into this giant ship! Update. The update. It was a little hairy when we were kind of coming with the, the incoming current uh, like on our beam. Uh -huh. And you know, we we're kind of like trying to like zigzag through the waves without getting too hobble horsey. But now we're hiding right down the side we want to do, which is right along the, the edge of the gray here. Having a snack. And it's just pretty swelly. Little, little waves for us to go up and down on. Yeah. So far, not bad so far. How many more miles till we get to the bar? I mean, I think we're kind of in it. I think the bar is like now for the next 10 miles or oh. whatever. I want an alarm to go off. Like, ding, 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 you made it. Like a little line across the river? Yeah. Like, just like, like a, a race. We snap through that banner like nobody's business. Status update, I think we're past all the hairy parts of the bar. We have strayed quite a bit out of the main shipping channel though because I got tired of trying to take the uh, waves on at like a 60 degree angle and make my way back towards it. So if you look up here, we're out of the gray, but we're into the blue. <laughs> I mean, it's uncomfortable and a little jarring sometimes, like this. Whee! My stomach <laughs> just dropped. But, it's not scary. I'm gonna be scared to open our cabinets when we get there. When we get where? Wherever we're going. Oh, I haven't seen any crab pods yet, knock on wood. Yeah, don't say so, that. Please let's please. hope we don't do that. So far, so good. At this point, we thought we were almost out of the rolliness, but little did we know, this was just the beginning. Status update, Kelly's feeling a bit puny. Yeah. We're dodging crab pots in confused seas. Trying to get out to where it's going to be a lot more calm, I hope. It's going to be a rough couple of days if it stays like this, but it shouldn't. I was not a fan of this action, but we pressed on, knowing that the sea state would be calmer the further we got out into the ocean away from shore. The motion felt a lot like this. As you can see, it was like what you'd imagine it would feel like being trapped inside of a washing machine. It is now 4.30. Roughly one hour past the bar. The first mate has gone after her Lowe's bucket because she's feeling a little low. And she's proceeding to fill it up. That's a bummer. It's a real bummer. Enjoying yourself, babe? Now that I've headed, I started heading south, it's a lot more comfortable, but every once in a while, the, the, a wave crawls up our butts and kind of tries to turn us sideways, so. 
got to be on my toes and the autopilot still can't handle it. I feel resolute. I just have to get us to Mexico. A few hours later, after emptying my stomach completely and taking a little siesta, I woke up to our first sunset at sea. This is not doing it justice. Yeah, it is. It's kind of a lame sunset. The dolphins are way cooler. Yeah, they are. We got dolphin buddies. The dolphins were really quick and hard to capture on film. Obviously, I had to cash in on this dolphin action at the bow and grab her a GoPro. Woo! <laughs> Kelly's going to re uh, recover her camera that's been up in the front of the boat getting douched. Sadly, I was too late. The GoPro did not make it through the bar and it died in the graveyard of the Pacific. You did it! I did. What are you doing up there? There's dolphins. Was well, there? Are they right by the crest? Or the bow? Yeah, they're just like going this way in front. You can <laughs> see them in the water. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Start bringing it back. Nice. Chris had been helming since we left, and our autopilot had been pretty finicky. See how it pushes you way off? Now you should be correcting for that. There you go. Now it's start bringing it. Like, keep going. We were also both on the lookout for crab pots. Oh, crab pots? Yep. You'll get a feel for it, and then you just have to glance at your compass every once in a while. You're a little too far south right now. You want to turn towards this way. We kept rocking and rolling into the night as the sun went down and the stars came out. Oh, and Mondingus woke up too. I ended up taking another nap as Chris kept on. Wrong one, sorry. There. I was finally feeling back to normal, was able to munch on a few saltine crackers, and with our autopilot back on track, my job was pretty easy. Literally just keeping my eyes open and waiting for other ships, markers, and making sure we're on track. We each took three hour shifts, and because Chris bared the brunt of our beginning, I let him sleep a little longer. It is 3.33 a.m. We've been traveling, skirting along at about uh, between, you know, six and a half and seven knots pretty much all day. Yesterday it was even faster, believe it or not. But I have relieved her on duty, just uh, taking a look around, making sure everything's going well. It's far from smooth, but I don't know if we're going to get much better than this on the coast of Oregon. That's A number one. All right, sleep well. Our watches so far have been pretty boring and uneventful, which is good, because I especially can't handle anything too exciting at the moment. We might be going a little crazy though. Chris just told me to keep an eye on this mystery light because it's not showing up on our radar, and it seems to be maintaining a relative distance. That's the moon. Barely risen. I thought it was a floating buoy that was lit up. Kelly came up and was like, the moon? I'm like, is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> it's like the moon. It is my turn to crawl into bed. 6 a.m. Shift change. Ah, the sun should be rising soon. I'm going to grab some Z's. At least 20 minutes, I hope. While Chris was fast asleep, I got the luxury of seeing our first sunrise on the ocean. It was truly a zen experience. 
The sea state was finally calm, no alarming factors, just the two of us and Drifter motoring south. Around 9 o'clock, Chris woke up for his shift. Morning. Morning. I did get some good sleep. And the sun is up. Welcome to day two. How is watch going? Watch is going well. Uneventful. Just how I like it. Had some salty breakfast. Delicious. Breakfast champion. I thought I'd come up and make breakfast. What do you think? Do you want to go back down or do you want to stay up for another few hours? I'll stay up. Alright. Yeah. Sweet. I'm going to go use the head. Okay. Alright, Cal. What has been the highlight of the trip so far? This wonderful voyage with mini ups? Uh, the dolphins is a huge highlight for me. And then going to get the like rescue the GoPro. And I just wanted to like there at the bow and watch them because they were doing all this crazy stuff and I was trying to film it but I could capture them in the water and they were like jumping out all over the place. Any scary moments? Uh, yeah. After we crossed the bar, when it started getting dark and it was like the past the point of no return and shit's rocking everywhere and I'm throwing up in a bucket and Chris is like, you know, like kicking ass here at the helm but I didn't know how long we could keep going and I didn't know when my nausea was going to pass and I was like, if I'm on watch after this, I don't know if I can make it. And that was scary. Yeah. I can tell you're afraid. Kelly is, she's a warm person, but she is not a, like, a overtly affectionate person. She's not, she's not the type that, like, touches you when she walks by or, you know, just, like, wants to be tactile. But before she went down, she came up to me and kind of, like, leaned into me and, like, patted me, like, Thank God you're here. <laughs> yeah. That also was one of my scary moments because when the sun was up, it was really easy to track the compass and make sure I was on the right heading. And I was hand steering because it was too hairy for the autopilot to take over. And then I got to the point where I was just like, man, I can't keep us on course with it, with, with it being this black. I can't see my compass. Every time I stop paying attention for a second to, to our heading, we're going east. And I was like, Jesus. So I, I like ultimately, I had to turn on the autopilot and uh, just pray that it was gonna do its job. And it has been a chance. One problem that the autopilot is, is it's completely reactionary and cannot uh, be preemptive. So that's where a human being has, has uh, the advantage over the autopilot and really crazy stuff. You can see the wave coming and turn into it. The autopilot can't see the wave coming so it reacts when it hits it and turns up into it. So it's a little bit more violent in big seas. The other thing that I haven't told Kelly yet that was a little concerning is in the middle of one of my watches at night, our depth meter goes to a thousand feet. And uh, once it hits a thousand feet, it just shows three dashes like this. Right there. Anyway, right in the middle of the night, that thing starts going 150, 120, 127, 130, 150, 160. And it just sat there in the middle of where it should not be shallow for a long time, for like a couple minutes of consistently like one, 100 to 150 meter depth or feet depth. I was, that's the only thing that made any sense. Like, like there was a whale under us or some shit. I was just like, oh God, I've heard a lot of story. This sea state, I can handle this for multiple days. One thing you don't really realize watching this, uh, living vicariously through other people is that it's just always moving. You're always moving. So when you try to go through the boat, you're like, if you don't grab onto something, you're being pinballed through the hallways as you go to the bathroom and things like that. So you can either sit down or hold on tight. And those are your two options. And it's not a bad sea state. Look at this. It was calm enough now, Chris was able to suit up in order to restock our beverage stash. 
which was absolutely critical because I was basically living off 7-Up at this point. While Chris was out, we also decided to hoist the mainsail for some added stability. Alright. If I remember correctly, that should kind of help stabilize our. give us less of this. So it's supposed to help with the side to side action. Seven knots on our nose, so we're not sailing right now. But it should help this action, the side to side stuff. I hope. And I doubt it's going to push us faster, but I hope it doesn't slow us down either. <laughs> Chris made us some eggs, and honest to god, I don't think I've ever been more appreciative of a hot dish. Even as simple as plain scrambled eggs. Thank you, dear. Okay. Yum. How'd I do? It is so good to have a hot meal. Really? I made the simple foods, and this is perfect. Excellent. Excellent. It's time for me to take a quick siesta in the afternoon. Sounds like a plan. That's you know, one thing I noticed about this whole like traversing without the sails up because the wind's in our face. It's uh, boring, and boring is good. Boring is good. Yeah, I'm gonna go take a nap. All right, good night. We both decided boring is good, especially for this trip, which is the first of many trips. After all, we're still figuring things out and constantly testing ourselves as well as our systems. A lot of this trip was just waiting for the next opportunity to take a nap. Just to prove to Kelly that the radar seems to work because there's a red block there. There's a ship right there. And this is an uncrustable. Chris then went down below for a mid-afternoon power nap. It has officially been 24 hours since we left. A little longer than that, Skelly. Yeah. I just woke up from a quick nap. 3 o'clock on Friday. Thursday, 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 Friday, Friday. Friday. 3 o'clock on Friday. I'm gonna make some dinner. We're gonna make uh, noodles. Yeah, noodles and, and chicken. Yeah. What else are we doing? We wake up, we sit in this chair, or sit in that chair and we stare out to the horizon and then we uh, trade places and do it all again that's what we, that's our lives for the last day and for the next day and then we should be there Ding. Ding. it was definitely a huge blessing to have the pilot house in this climate i couldn't imagine being stuck outside in the elements for any part of this passage also, our Starlink internet kept us connected the entire way, so we were never offline. Chris started preparing dinner, which is a whole event in itself. Unfortunately, while dinner smelled absolutely amazing, we were both too squishy to really dig in on the feast. While dinner was now cooling, we decided to take down the mainsail for the evening so it wouldn't catch us up in the dark. Plus, we hadn't really noticed a considerable difference. We then kept motoring on into the night. Can't let this go to waste. I'm sure one of us will eat it later. Back to watch, this will be our second overnight at sea.
Every time I stare at my phone or a tablet, my nausea would come back. So having this much free time to contemplate and think without a device became really meditative and relaxing. It's a weird feeling to be this far from anything and disconnected. The guy's going to hit the sack, the sun's going down, and I'm about ready to take over and eat some of my nudes. Yeah, enjoy your nudes. Thanks. Yeah. Sleep well. I'll see you in three hours. I leave you in calm conditions. Let's hope that you arise in the same. Okay. Okay. Good night. Good night. Try not to eat them all. In about four or five hours, we'll be making our turn to go into Crescent City. If it were daylight, I might try putting up a sail to help push us along, but since it's the dead of night, I'll leave that alone. That's a good call. I woke up from my watch to another great sunrise that just got progressively more and more awesome. I feel like we really hit our stride at this point. Even though we both had obviously slept, we were still incredibly tired. But moments like these kept us going. Ah, the sun's up, and I'm up. But I think Kelly's about to lay down. It's day three. Yes, it is. We should arrive today, theoretically. Kelly's up, yeah. day three, Saturday morning, about 11 a.m. We're supposed to arrive at the mouth of the harbor at about 2 o'clock. I wish there was more to talk about. I just got a snack just to give myself something to do. I just enjoyed a delicious apple. A Rosa Parks apple. What kind of apple was it? That was pink. Pink lady. Pink lady. Kelly's over there texting her Twitter gram. See? Look at that. She's all she does anymore is do infrared photography. Anything to report, Kelly? Yes, we're going to try to decide whether or not we should push down to Eureka, California, which has a lot more amenities closer to where we would be, or if we should stick in Crescent City for a while, because we've got some weather coming in in just a couple of days. We can sneak down to Eureka before it hits, or we can stay put, and that's what we're trying to decide now. Yeah. I am kind of tired of being in the boat, so it'll be nice to have at least, we'll have at least one day uh, one full day, two nights at dock in Crescent City before we go anywhere. So that's nice. That'll be a good respite. So, we're about to pull in to Crescent City. Overall, well, what was your experience like? Tell me about your experience. Sailing the open seas without sailing. We sailed. No, we didn't. We motor sailed. We motored the entire way. We we motor sailed the entire way, answer the question. Uh, I am so glad we did this, and I'm glad we did it at the time we did it. We even shaved like a whole day off our travel somehow, which was nice. The lessons that I mainly learned this trip were having everything stowed and then having things that you need accessible, like readily accessible. Like what? Clarity on your... Food items and the vomit bucket. Oh, the vomit bucket. That's right. Oh. That was nice. We stayed really warm. A lot of people complain about this being a very cold passage and that just taking a toll on your body, but we had the heat going and we were inside, so we didn't have to worry about that at all. We haven't had much of an appetite, but I think we planned, planned really well food-wise. Just having like snacks and things to keep us going, electrolytes, water. What about you? My biggest takeaway is I'm glad we decided to push on through despite how hairy it was in the beginning. If we would have gone out to the ocean, experienced what we did with how uncomfortable and, and confused the seas were, and then headed back into Astoria, it would have been extremely difficult to do that again. I feel really comfortable and confident after that experience going out like our little John from possibly Crescent City to Eureka. Like, no big deal. Like, that's no big deal anymore to me. And, like, that whole mindset is because of that trip. Yeah. I would agree with that. And that's what I wanted 
us to have. I was very afraid that this, like, just the tip seat trial that we talked about doing would have made one or both of us apprehensive about going out in the ocean. And this is no joke. This area of the country is some of the scariest sea states in the world. We picked a very calm condition time to go out and do this. That's why we were motoring the whole time. We eventually got into that calmness where it was like nice seas and easy to go. We're still in that now. But at first it was not. It was confused and hairy. And I'm just glad we pushed through that. I think that that have, will uh, continue to help us with progressing down the coast because we decided to do that. I think that was our best decision that we've made so far. As we start approaching land, we quickly realize we need to keep an eye out for floating objects. There's the greeting committee. We both kept our eyes peeled, scouting for those pesky crab pots. I can't imagine how we would ever have made it coming in at night. We were almost there. The anticipation was killer. We were so close, but still only going about five knots, so far away. Finally, we rounded the jetty and the end was in sight. There's our entrance. Looks clear to me. Okay, this marker is my cue. Time to get drifter ready for a long-awaited docking. You're probably eight feet from the dock. Now we're about six feet from the dock. Uh, four feet, three, three feet, two feet. Could you jump off if you had to? Yeah, I could. Okay, I Should I jump? Tonight. Let me know when I can jump. Good right, job. Right. Hurry! We're here in Crescent City, California. We've we made, made it. it. We're tied up. The engine is still on. Yep. There's a real concrete pier. We're on I don't land. Think it's going anywhere. Does this count as land? I guess it doesn't no, really. really. No, don't. we're still floating. <sighs> Let's get the boat turned off. Okay. All right. For the first time in two full days, it took us actually two hours less than two full days because we're rocking and rolling. We're here. Set up a spring line and call it good, huh? Yeah, Netflix and chill. <laughs> Phew, that's it for this week. Tune in next week for our next hop. Hey, guess what? What? What are you making there? What's, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> hey man, don't knock until you try it. Why uh, drink coffee and eat oatmeal when you can do both at the same time? Oh, Plus efficiency. it's already hot, so it cooks my oatmeal. Huh. It's pretty brilliant, actually. It Don't... smells delicious. I'll let you try it if you're good. Have you not seen me make this before? No. <laughs> it's not the first time. Anyway, what? We got a new patron. We did? Yeah. Mmm. Awesome. It's What's kind of a man of mystery. A.G.D. Kato. A.G.D. Kato? Yeah. Well, Kato, I'm gonna call him Kato. 
until I hear different. Well, cool. Welcome to Borg. AG K K AG uh, Kato. <laughs> Thanks. Mm hmm. Fix your hair. Yes, dear. You look like you're crazy. I think that you can theoretically signal aliens with those lights. Okay. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. I don't look tired. Oh boy, do I look tired. It's probably because I'm a little tired. Just a little bit farther to come in.